Back to Iguodala to win it. Oh! oh. And Golden State wins the game. A lot for Bogut. David Lee, beautiful delivery to Bogut. David Lee dumps it. Curry over LeBron. Oh. Oh. Curry jumps for him. The Trailblazers were trying to become this year's Warriors, but the original still drawing raves as Golden State recently put together a 10-game win streak, one off the franchise record. And look at these impressive numbers during an 11-1 and stretch. Outstanding. Which leads us now to the man who helped build the Warriors team. GM Bob Myers joins us by phone. Bob, congratulations. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thanks, thanks, Vince. I appreciate it. Now, it seems like in watching this team the last couple of years from the outside, there's like an esprit de corps with this team. They genuinely like each other. How accurate is that? And, and is that overrated in team success? Yeah, Vince, they don't like each other. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I do believe it's real. It's genuine. It's one of the rare instances where the perception equates to the reality. I do think um, the guys really do get along. It's like a college-type atmosphere, and it makes a difference. 82 games is a long time in a regular season, and you're going to have adversity. And I think you find with high-character teams and teams that get along, when you go through stretches of adversity, which, which we have, um, early on with, with Curry out and Nicodala was out, we were not blowing the doors off um, of, of anything early on in the season. To stay the course um, is much easier with high-character guys as opposed to guys that might let go of the rope or start pointing fingers. So I do think it matters. And then when you get to the playoffs, um, things really ramp up as far as intensity-wise. And to know that your teammate's in your corner and he's unselfish and it's all about the team, I do think it helps over the long haul. Okay, uh, now we always search for blemishes or, or marks on teams, so I'm going to flip it a little bit here. And the Warriors... Yeah, we, we've got some. Well, okay, well, let me get, let me get there. <laughs> right, you're, you're next to last in the league in turnovers, and I know there have been a lot of heroics of late, Steph Curry, Andre Iguodala hitting those late jumpers, but turnovers sometimes late have put you in positions where you need hero play. Are you concerned about that, and do you feel like the team has made strides in helping to correct that? Uh, I'm concerned. This. I think we should be. I mean, any time you're next to last or last in the league in any category for that matter, that's a problem. That's an area that you need to address. I know our coaches are working on addressing it. Some of it has to do with the pace of play. Steph Curry's done a tremendous job of running the point guard position, and he makes some unbelievable plays and is a large part the reason for our success this year. But he knows he's turning the ball over at a rate that, that, that is unacceptable. He knows that he's working on it. Our coaches know it. So, in order for us to improve, um, we need to cut down on our turnovers. There's no secret to it. Um, I don't think any good team, is, as far as consistently good, can, can be where we are turnovers wide in the NBA. So we've got to do a better job. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll take the uh, responsibility for that and just need to do a better job. Bob, you mentioned the early season adversity you had to overcome the injuries. How important was it internally for you guys to watch how this team and how this group would handle that and overcome it and and how they would come out on the other side obviously the 10 game win streak being a product of what you guys went through early on you know it's like it's hard because early on we did struggle and in the front office position what, what's most difficult for us is how do you evaluate your team when you haven't had a full team and when we suffered injuries early it makes it that much harder because you haven't really had a, a window where you can view the team at its full strength and so that was difficult to know what we had i think if if you suffer an injury two-thirds of the way into the season or halfway point you never want to suffer an injury but if you do at least you had a good chunk of time to evaluate what your starters were doing but we really didn't have that time because of curry missing some early ones and then they could being out uh, but now we feel like we've had a pretty good chunk of time to evaluate what our team is at full strength or close to full strength we still have uh, jermaine o'neill's out Festus azili's out so our two uh, backup centers are out, so we, we still haven't had a full complement of players. But we, we're pretty good when we have uh, at least our top six, seven guys healthy. That doesn't mean we don't have a lot to work on. It doesn't mean we don't have a long way to go. We've got a brand-new bench, and um, there's some things we need to improve upon, certainly. But it is hard if you, when, you, when you have early injuries to really evaluate your team, uh, and that's something we kind of struggle with, and hopefully you're having more time to evaluate now. Bob, speaking of O'Neal and Azili, what's the timetable on both of those guys? And, and given the fact that you guys are in a really good position right now, can you be proactive maybe in terms of bringing in another big if you think you need it for the stretch run? 
David, it depends upon when these guys are exactly coming back. You know, Jermaine's 50 years old. He's 35. He's really 50. I mean, this guy, I laughed. The day in the locker room, I said, I knew when we signed you, you'd get hurt. I didn't know you'd get hurt this much. So we had a good time with that. But um, I think he's closer to coming back than Festus right now. I, I'm hoping it's three weeks or maybe on the shorter side of that for Jermaine. Uh, he's out there running around. But, but the, the issue is with his wrist. In taking a hit, um, you have to let that, that, that ligament heal, so he's going to have to wear a brace. And Festus is one that we're more patient with because he had a different type of procedure on his knee, and that's one where he hasn't played basketball in six, seven months. And so you want to be patient because we think he's a big part of our future. He was probably a person that was most overlooked in regards to our success last year. Bogut was out most of the year, and Festus, I think um, you know, a lot of people didn't realize how important he was for us last year, and then to not have him at all this year, thankfully we've been able to do it because Bogut's been healthy. But uh, both those guys, I think, will help us, and I think they'll be back, David, soon enough where we won't have to make a move there in the front court. Uh, but but they're uh, they're going to give us a boost, as you all three know. Uh, if, you're, if we're fortunate enough to make it to the postseason, you need size and you need depth in the front court because it gets a lot more physical. And if you don't have those type of players, you can get worn down pretty quick. So we we do think they'll be back when we need them. Bob, team success can also mean individual success or recognition for players. And last year, David Lee was an all-star. What would it mean to the team with David Lee and Steph Curry both to be headed to New Orleans as all-stars? No, I mean, all-stars, I think, um, are come from, well, at least it seems to come from good teams. So if you have a couple all-stars, it means your team's doing pretty well. And that would be great. I think for our team, for our organization, it was I think David was the first one in something like 17 years or 15 years uh, when he got recognized last year. And obviously a lot of people feel like Steph should have been recognized last year and wasn't. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that he probably has a good chance this year to, to, to be there. But, you know, if you have two all-stars, it means your team's doing well. And that's how we look at it from a front office standpoint organizationally. Uh, and, and that's the most important thing. Players know that if, uh, if your team's being successful, individuals will get recognized, and that, that, that would mean the most to myself and I think the organization. Both of those guys are doing a tremendous job for our team, and I do think deserve it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right, Bob, thank you so much for the time, and congratulations on team success. And I'm really glad that you can hear me because when you play in Roracle Arena, I would think that the decibel level would inflict some sort of a long-term damage. So we're okay, right, hearing-wise? Well, Vince, if you, were, if you really cared about me and our team, you'd come see a game. I mean, I know hey. all of come through there. Hey, Koo, have you made, I think yeah. you might have made it out there. Oh, yeah. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Better work. It's a great place to watch basketball. Absolutely. I'm coming out there. It's on the record. <laughs> Got to go. Thanks for the invite, Bob.